Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 3 talking about static testing and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 3.2 Feedback and Review Process. And as part of today's tutorial, we'll be covering the last segment of this which is 3.2.5 Success Factors for Review. And here we'll help you understand that what makes a review process successful no matter what type of review you are conducting. Indeed, one of the most simple and very short topic of this particular chapter, but yet important equally, that is how exactly a set of factors can drive your review process to be successful. However, in nutshell, we would like to tell you something more about the factors which influence the success rate of a review process. It includes the management's participation and at the same time the contribution from the reviewers. So say for example, if management does not support and do plan of the review process well or does not select the right set of reviewer, does not appropriately work on the schedule, then also the review may not succeed. But at the same time, if I talk about the reviewer, no matter a management takes all the effort to do a better plan for the review process and schedule, time frame, budget, etc. But if the reviewers do not contribute to the process well, then also the review process may be a failure. That means it requires the equal balance and contribution from both the side, that is management, and at the same time, the reviewers also. In the same context, let's look at those factors which clearly comes into our insights in order to talk about how a review process can be successful when conducted in the organization. To start with, we are talking about here that there are several factors that determine the success of review, which includes number one, defining clearly objectives and measurable exit criteria. Evaluation of participants should never be an objective. Now, the most important thing coming up right on your screen with the first point is that you must have an objective. Why are you conducting a review? Which should be seen as a measurable in the goal that at the end, if we achieve that goal, that's where we have done what we were supposed to do. So indeed, any review should have a clear objective and a well-defined goal. But at the same time, reviewing individual participants should not be an objective for the review. That means it should be conducted in an atmosphere of trust and the evaluation or inputs what we get from the reviewer should not be used to judge the reviewer and different other participants. Also to add here, choosing an appropriate review type to achieve the given objective and to suit the type of work product the review participants, the project needs and context. Here, we are just trying to tell you about as given we have discussed that we have different types of review process. Of course, not one is applicable for different documentations and blindly other one cannot be doing so. So in simple words, I cannot use inspection where review informal review would be enough or I should not use informal review where inspection is required. So review types must be appropriately selected and in context of different other things, including the participant, the type of work product and so on. Plus to add here, of course, conducting review on small chunks so that reviewers do not lose concentration during an individual review and or the review meeting when held. Of course, uh, you should not take a bigger chunk of work at the same time. For example, sometimes some documents are very lengthy. For example, a requirement document can be of 100 pages at a time. But does that mean I should take 100 pages at a time for the review? Answer is absolutely no. You can break this into small chunks of pieces, for example, 25 page document or certain segments at a time and then look forward to review them. And then once you're done with this, move to the next 25 pages or next set of sections of the review, sorry, requirement, and then look forward to review them. That means break your work, simplify your work as small as possible, which could be more effective and efficient when conducting the reviews. Further adding to the discussion, uh, providing feedback from reviews to stakeholder and authors so that they can improve the product and their activities. Of course, uh, this input is very, very important because not only we find anomalies in the documentations, but sharing a feedback with the stakeholder that is the different other team members, including the author as well, the person who has written the document under review, 
will help the person improvise the way the document should be written in upcoming future cycles or maybe future projects. So such feedbacks must be shared and that makes a review more successful. Adding beyond here, of course, uh, providing adequate time to participants to prepare for the review and support from the management for the review process. Number one, of course, we should give enough time to the team members so that they can go through the document which is a management specific factor. Certainly, if I ask you to review a 20 page document in one hour of time, you would say, sorry, that's a very really little time. I can do something really creative or important, right? Because 20 page documents certainly need some time to go through and I have to give that comfort to my reviewer. So never enforce the time frame, which is not enough for that type of document or that criticality of the document. So give them adequate time, depending on the type of document and criticality, so that the team can really spend some good time reviewing them and bring back those values to the review process and add value to the overall benefit, right? Because it is all about making a review successful, not doing it for formality. And the same time, the you know management should support the review process as much as possible. That means give them guidance, give them necessary information, or give them enough notice, kind of like advanced uh, indications that, hey, we'll be coming up with the review probably next week, so you must make yourself available. Don't surprise them. And there are many such things which we can deep dive into to elongate it further. Plus to add here, of course, making review part of the organization culture to promote learning and process improvement. It's not something which is a kind of an event which happens and then can be forgotten well, not at all. Of course, event uh, static reviews or static testing should be a part of the culture. That means anytime you get a document, you must review, just like how you select an offer from a company, but you do go through each and every line to make sure that all the criteria and conditions are understood by you before you sign the offer letter, right? And that's a casual thing, right? It's not even a formal. So it's, it's a part of your daily routine that when you get a document, you get to read it, understand it, and then accept it. Same way here, we must make it as a culture that any type of documentation, any kind of work product, even if it is defect report, execution report, test summary report, let it be reviewed by someone before we push it across. I know this could be too much of work, but trust me, to avoid any kind of discrepancy at a later point of time, this small, quick review, very informal, could save your day and time as well, or sometime not even meeting the expectation of the product. So that's how it goes. Plus to add here, of course, uh, providing adequate training to all the participants so they know how to fulfill their role and facilitate meeting. So the most important thing here is giving them the proper training. Of course, just like how I gave you a training here to prepare you well on the certification, including how to conduct the review types or review process altogether. Now you all are well trained on how the review process takes place. And you can very well go and educate your team members and participate in the review more professionally. But given that you don't train your team members and you ask them to participate in the review, it may not be successful at all. In that context, it is equally an important point. Plus, being having a success factor as facilitating the review process, it is equally important. You need to have someone who is really important in terms of awareness of the review process, like a moderator or someone who knows how to conduct a review process should be very important. Just like when you have a scrum process, you need a scrum master. Same way when you're conducting reviews in your organization, you need a moderator who is trained on how to conduct the reviews, which will make your review process successful. So put together, putting up all these points, plus there are many other things which we discussed casually on the way, should be considered and taken into account in order to make a review successful. If ignored, certainly you might be conducting the review processes, but it may be just a waste of time and may not be helpful and yielding good set of results that has good defects, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.